And we really need to talk about Brexit. Time is running out and so too is patience. As the European Union's chief negotiator declared that there had been no real progress in the post-Brexit trade talks with the UK before a potentially make-or-break summit later this month. Michel Barnier said the UK had shown no real desire to explore compromise and was constantly trying to backtrack on commitments which Boris Johnson made last year. The UK said today that progress was limited, but that the tone of the talks was generally quite positive, adding that things would have to accelerate and intensify if there was to be any chance of agreement. The EU quarter in Brussels has joined the long list of places competing for a post-apocalyptic movie set. The soldiers on the streets offering protection against what exactly? The mind-bending emptiness of a parliament that represents 450 million people. The invisible virus has spirited away the people, all hunkered down in their digital clouds. Both of you. And that includes the EU and UK negotiators, who spent the last four days zooming at each other about their future trade relationship. Judging from Michel Barnier today, it's a case of social distance meets political chasm. In all areas, the UK continues to backtrack on the commitments it had undertaken in the political declaration, including on fisheries, where we committed to use our best endeavours to conclude and ratify a new agreement by the 1st of July 2020. To be clear, our lack of progress in this negotiation is not due to our method, but to the substance. So don't blame the technology, but real disagreements on fisheries, a level playing field, and how to police the new relationship. Do you believe that actually Britain doesn't care whether it gets a deal or not? Well, that has been my, uh, my conviction already since a few months, and especially when the British government said that under no circumstances they would consider an extension of the negotiating period, uh, even after the pandemic hit, uh, that was a clear sign to me that actually they're not interested in the deal. So I think that the rationale of the British government is to lead the United Kingdom through a crash Brexit, blame it on these bloody Europeans, say this is going to be our Battle of Britain moment where we will come out stronger out of difficult times imposed on us by these bloody Europeans and he will be able to, well he, I mean uh, the Prime Minister, will be able to hide the economic consequences of that beneath uh, the blanket of, uh, of, uh, of the pandemic uh, uh, economic recession. You would be quite happy to see Britain crash out at the end of the year without a deal on WTO terms even though that might be really bad for business. Well, I don't think it's going to come to that. Uh, we're moving to towards the deadline of the 1st of July, which is the last date an extension could uh, be asked for. I think once we've passed that, the EU will realise that we're, we are leaving on the uh, 31st of December, the transition period. Um, we're offering them tariff and quota free trade as we've got at the moment. But I don't think we're going to get any sense from the EU until all hope is extinguished that we're going to ask for an extension. But since Covid, Brexit has slipped even further down the EU's list of priorities. Last month, Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron pushed forward with a massive stimulus package that may well pave the way for the European Commission to raise its own taxes and spend them on recovery. The place looks dead and deserted, but don't be fooled by that, because the things that are being decided in Brussels these days, as a result of COVID-19, on Zoom or behind closed doors, are moving the European Union one step closer to becoming a genuine fiscal union. If you like, another milestone on the road to a United States of Europe. Or not, one can never be sure. But whatever happens, the EU is heading one way and Britain the other. Well, joining me now from The Hague is the Dutch MEP, Cathy Piri, who's a member of the UK Coordination Group in the European Parliament. Thanks for coming on the programme again, Cathy. Uh, you heard Michel Barnier today. How grim does the state of these talks sound to you? Well, I think as grim as he expressed, it sounds like a total stalemate. And as we know, we are halfway through the transition period. And it's clear that even after four negotiation rounds, not 
actually no progress has been made in these talks. So are you now getting used to the idea, to the, perhaps even the probability, of a crash Brexit, a no-deal Brexit? Well, I think if we want to be realistic, we have to prepare for both. The time pressure is there from the British side because they are the ones who don't want to ask for an extension, which leaves us with a very uh, hard deadline at, uh, at mid-October. And it's not sure if these talks continue the way they are now, it doesn't look like we will reach an agreement. So I think to be realistic, we have to prepare for both scenarios. I mean, listening to you uh, and listening to Andrew Bridgen earlier, it sounds like an old record that's being replayed over and over again. I mean, this could have been a conversation that we had literally a year ago. But I wonder if a no-deal Brexit just matters less to you in the time of COVID-19 when you've got all these other worries on your mind. I wouldn't say so. I think uh, just as Britain, all the countries also inside the European Union are now, of course, also under an enormous uh, health crisis, but also an economic crisis. Let's be honest. This crisis will have to be paid for and we will feel it also economically. So my urge would be also to the British government, yet let's use this COVID-19 pandemic as a narrative for a reason for success and not as an excuse for failure. Right. But, I mean, the, the British government, as you said, has its own economic issues to sort out, as indeed does the rest of the European Union. Um, I just wonder whether, at the end of the day, Brexit actually matters that much to people in the European Union, given everything else that's going on. Well, of course, it's clear that under such a pandemic and a health crisis, everyone was very busy with that. But let's not forget, we have so many businesses, we have so many citizens so dependent on a future trade deal uh, that, of course, it will matter. Of course, we will see the economic effect if we cannot reach a comprehensive partnership with, you know, our most close neighbor with who we have been together for so many years. So I wouldn't say this is a small item. It's at least on top of the agenda of the European Parliament. Okay. Katia Piri, thank you very much indeed for coming.